Well, it's a Thursday, and now let's talk technology. That's what we do on, on Tech Thursdays. And uh, in this time, it's even become more important. All forms of technology. Now, one in six people with coronavirus become seriously ill with breathing difficulties is one of the main symptoms they're likely to face. Now, with Ghana's cases going over now 1,100 with nine deaths so far, issues of life support equipment so far have dominated discussion platforms. They've become topical. One of them, respirators or ventilators, have been the go-to equipment in COVID-19 intensive care units across Ghana and the world. Sadly, Ghana just doesn't seem to have that luxury because if you look at the world market prices, they are expensive. But there's hope as engineering students at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. They have developed a low-cost automated respirator. And today, Lava Firm's Kwesi Debra speaks with the young people behind this great innovation. The group of researchers, led by the president of the Institute of Safety, Disaster and Emergency Studies, Dr. Ishmael Norman, decided to undertake research on all-risk emergency preparedness in Ghana's hospitals. And do you know what they found? Only 45.5% had respirators. Of course, Kofanochi Teaching Hospital is having some. Kulibu Teaching Hospital is having a number of them. What about the district hospitals? The least said about them, the better. Students at the KNUST have, for the past two years, been working on how to write a good ending to the story captured in the Ghana Medical Journal. Professor Mark Aduma Samoa is Provost College of Engineering. Most of the district hospitals and community hospitals, they, they lack ventilators. So we initiated a project with the University of Michigan to build um, locally made ventilators. Hospital grade ventilator cost between 130,000 cities and 300,000 cities. The team put together by Professor Mark Adumasamoa has been thinking of less expensive ventilators. We felt that if we could get a ventilator that would have the basic functions for human breathing, then it will, be, it will go a very long way to help with our health delivery system. The prototype has an initial cost of 20,000 cities, which the college believes will reduce significantly if mass-produced. Professor Kwame Osebwate is one of the project coordinators. When you are building prototype, it's not that which we use to price the product on the market, but rather all these problems we are going through, once we are done, we would have prepared templates and we can then mass produce. When you are mass producing, you do a whole lot at a time and so you are able to bring the price down. Ashanti Regional Clinical Engineering Manager, Ghana Health Services, Eric Sakimensa, do is impressed of what is likely to be the first automated ventilator to make his way into Ghana's intensive care walls. He knows additional functionalities will be apt. For a life support device like a ventilator, you need to check something we call the SPO2, the amount of oxygen in the patient. We need to know. Also, it's a monitoring device, so we need to get its temperature, check sometimes the ECG. And then we have some technicalities that we call something like the tidal wave. We need to know all these things. And when we discussed with them, they made us aware that they have all these things in the prototype document. Professor Seb Watin has therefore been taking notes. What we'll be adding to it is that it's, as it is, it's already automated, but still there are certain functions we could still automate further. Because we are thinking that you wouldn't have, uh, uh, some people may not be in so critical a condition, such that they may be aided with the you know, ventilator for a while, and then at the time they regain uh, their composure and are able to breathe, then the machine itself should be able to sense that now the person is okay so it can go off by itself. Or if the person is okay and is on the person, at the time that the person begins to struggle, it should be able to detect 
and kick in so that it, it helps. These are the fine tuning in terms of automation that we are thinking about now. Yeah, and then in addition to this, we are thinking of other adding devices that could also monitor the signals from the body, like the electrocardiograph. The college says the ventilator, which is 95% complete, will be fully functional in two months' time, but will require financial support. For Joy News, Kwesi Deborah. Technology is good. And when we have great innovators, it also means that they need some great help. And I hope that we will invest in research and development in our country so that all these science, mathematics, and technology students will become the frontliners for us to develop. I'm talking about science, technology, mathematics. Uh, one person who studied that in school is Professor William Ampofo. He is a virologist and he heads the virology department, the Noguchi uh, Memorial Research Institute. And I tell you, they are key frontliners in testing um, all those uh, suspected cases of victims of coronavirus. And ultimately, we will need some explanations on test kits. Um, where they're coming from, how efficacious they are, uh, and then all the relevant things that they do at Noguchi that has now become more important than ever. Well, Kojo Yangson is doing that discussion with Professor William Ampofu, and I know that you're going to enjoy it. Very much educative, and it's all set. Kojo, you can take it up. Professor Ampofu, I hope you can hear me. Yes, good morning. I hope you can hear me too. Absolutely. It's good to see you. And thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, yesterday, we all had the benefit of um, your explanations at the presser, uh, where you talked us through um, th that confusion around some numbers, you know, um, of how many tests we've done uh, and so forth. Now, the, the general highlight, what I understood is that you were using a certain type of testing. Uh, I picked up the term pool testing, where you could test 10 samples with the reagent, and if there is uh, any of those 10 samples that uh, has uh, the coronavirus, then you know that you need to test each of those 10 individually. But if you test all 10 and there's no sign, then you know that they are all negative and you can move on to the next batch of 10. That's, that's, that's about right. Have I, have I summarized it properly? Uh Yes, what we do is that um, uh, we batch the samples in tens. We used to do it in mm. fives, uh, but we realized that we could do it in tens. We did a little trial, which is actually right. a very important experiment to ensure that when we mix all the ten together, um, they were not diluting each other out so that mm. uh, with the minimum amount of, 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 of reagent, we could test ten samples at one go instead of testing them individually. Right. I think we may have lost the audio there. I'm struggling to hear you, um, Prof. Yeah, sorry, I, I can't hear you, Prof. I, I, I can't hear myself either, to, 